retracts up. So the bomb on the bottom oh, looks yeah. good. That's nice. I like it. This is great. Oh no, I lost my canopy. Oh no. All right, Eskimo Nate. Oh. This is the FMS 1100 millimeter Zero. It's not a huge plane, but it is the biggest Zero that I've ever owned. And I'm really happy about that because I used to fly on video game simulators like Combat Sim back in the day, like the P-51 and the Zero. And it was just uh, childhood memories and you know, of course, it's just a classic World War II airplane. I love the fact that this has split flaps on the back, which is very cool. They drop down from below. You almost can't even see them until they are actually opened. And then the bomb on the bottom, which is really cool too. You could paint that up and make it look really nice if you wanted to. And then of course, the keen eye will have already seen, we have retracts with flaps that open and close too. Now, as I said, that is the Zero. This is the face of a person that is grateful to not be sick and out here flying today. Now it is super cold, so we're gonna cut right to the chase and put this in the air and see how it does. I also wanna let you guys know that I'll be testing a new transmitter today because um, things are just getting expensive. When orange juice is $7 a gallon, not everybody has $400 to spend on a transmitter to get in the air. So, you know, you're buying planes like this, you might wanna fly on a more budget-friendly radio. And my favorite of all time has always been Tactic, but they just don't sell it anymore and mine is actually showing its age and it's got some issues now, sadly. So I picked up a new radio. I wanna test it out. Let you guys know how that does too. A maiden and a maiden. It's, <laughs> and it's way windier than it was supposed to be. So this is, I'm really scared right now. So let's fly. It has like that unnecessary little extra door for the wheel. That's pretty cool. It looks good when it's closed, it's flush. Yeah, I know, I like it. I would talk about the radio before the flight, but it's just so cold that I wanna make sure my fingers aren't frozen completely solid for the flight, so let's go. Boy, I hope this goes well. <laughs> nice. Ooh, pretty smooth. Yeah, that was a great takeoff, honestly, considering all the wind. This is a 3S airplane, guys, and I love the white wingtips with the big red circle for the Zero. It makes it very easy to see, especially on an overcast day. Oh yeah, this is flying through the wind great. This is really good. <laughs> Silky smooth, no trimming. Retracts up. The bomb on the bottom oh, looks yeah. good. That's nice. I like it. This is great. Oh no, I lost my canopy. Oh no, okay, it's in the grass. We're fine. We're fine. Don't it's, it's forget fine. It's where fine. it is. Yep. You probably it's need not, to land, yeah? No, it's not affecting flight right but now. But your battery! It's strapped in. <laughs> well, the you wires land. are tight. I'm going to land. The wires are tight in there, okay? And that was pushing on the canopy. And <laughs> I got it on video, you struggling yeah, to get you know the canopy what? on. You'll try that again. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Very windy. I'm just gonna let it hit the grass. <laughs> okay, fine. Right, Do you know where it is? About. Okay. Is it on the ground? Really? I thought that you'd have to climb the hill. Your lucky day. I can't believe you didn't have to get it off the hill. This is what we mean by depth perception. When I'm on this side of the runway, you can see the hill isn't as close as what it seems. I tried to look away and watch it. <laughs> flutter down and I knew it landed just to the right of the wind. You did good. Thing. So yeah, see what happened is my battery wire pushed on that popped it up. So I think I'm you're going to have to flip the way the batteries in there. Rotate it or something. Yeah. Like I mean, is it really necessary for that to be humped right no, there? I know that's, I would cut that away, but that's holding the pilot in. That's how mm -hmm. they helped. That's what they did for the pilot. And he looks good. It doesn't seem necessary to have it sticking out that far. So I think what I've done here is gonna work. I just got my wire. Now this is the recommended battery size too. So it's a little, little annoying when airplanes are so tight, but that means we get maximum flight time, right? Right. So that's our new receiver. These are my frozen fingers. <laughs> and I think that's going to be less I don't think so. pushy now. It's worse. <clears throat> it's definitely worse. Hey! It's all your spaghetti wires of that. There, that's great. That's, okay. that's good. That was better. Let's go. <laughs> that was better than when you did your first takeoff. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Nothing like a good take two. That's okay. It's like more fun. <laughs> now we know. Get those wires really tucked in on this. A little right rudder on takeoff, but not much. That's just because it's a warbird. 
landing gear up. And I didn't mess with flaps because of all this wind on the takeoff or the landing. I'll show you the split flaps. Flies really good. I mean, just about, probably better than I was expecting because it's a warbird. Yeah. Oh, that wind. And I'll tell you what, the one thing I didn't do with this radio <coughs> was mess with uh, Expo. And I wanted to just because the layout is different and I, I felt like I was only getting one end of Expo rather than upper and lower, if that makes sense. So um, when you when you start learning a new radio, it's almost like learning a new language sometimes. Now, Tactic, I've always said, is the most intuitive, easy to use, but still advanced enough to really get the job more than done. I've, I've always loved Tactic, but I really should stop talking about it because it's like like a dinosaur you just can't you just can't buy it anymore so it doesn't really do anyone any good and then i think after that is probably spectrum on like ease of use and user interface and stuff <clears throat> way down at the bottom is something like tyrannus just really hard to learn um and then this falls somewhere between tyrannus and spectrum i think so as far as user interface goes well like the receiver and stuff this is great this is i should tell you this this radio is a well, I think it's normally 150 and I picked it up at a 130 or 135. It was on sale and I just thought this is time. It's time to, to also focus on a budget friendly radio. So that's what I got. That's what I'm flying on. The gimbals feel really good. It feels very weighty and meaty and uh, not like a cheap toy or anything. And for that price, you would expect it to feel cheap. It has a collared backlit screen. Uh, we'll talk about it more later. The airplane is flying great. And that's a 3S airplane, but it has a 40 amp um, ESC in there. And so I'm gar I guarantee everybody's going to say, Nate, you could have just flown 4S. Why don't you fly 4S? Well, I'm, I'm doing what it recommends. And maybe one day I'll throw a 4S in there. Because I think most people, most people would probably <clears throat> start by flying on the recommended battery. And I'll be honest, here's full throttle. Climbing it. We'll go on forever and snap it. <clears throat> Do I need 4S? I mean, that was really awesome, right? It's flying great. It flies really good. One of the better flying warbirds I've ever had my hands on. It's really good. <laughs> and it comes with extra features like split flaps and retracts. sounds good and well it's really just a quiet little airplane and it looks nice in scale probably the most frustrating thing is like minimum canopy room but without expo she's flying really smooth there's no flight stabilizer in there there's no smart nothing we're just flying on good old dumb stuff I wonder how it does inverted and then i probably should learn because this is just a 3S2200. <laughs> in the cold. Yeah. Oh yeah, outside loop is nice. Let's see that inverted pass again. Just to see what it wants to do. It wants to come down some, but look at that outside loop. That was great. Yeah, this, the characteristics and tendencies of this airplane are awesome. Okay, there's the retracts. Let's try this. <clears throat> Let's bring it down before it gets too windy. Got a nice little gap here. Retracts down. Ooh. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. I like that. Really smooth landing. In the grass. Touch the grass. But you know what? <laughs> it's like landing. I'll take it. Let's see if I can show you guys these split flaps. Okay, ready? That look good. Yep. Nice, right? Yep. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the, um, the machine guns and the wind speed instrument over there on the wing, all optional. It's got a nice <clears throat> two piece foam that pops off and then you put the plastic piece in and glue the foam cover back on. So it's really flush if you don't want that to be on there. And just a word to the wise, I had to use my pocket knife to kind of pry those two pieces apart when I was putting these guns on. It took maybe 30 minutes to assemble. It really wasn't bad at all. It's very easy assembly. 
very easy. I really like it. The hardest part was actually um, <clears throat> the retracts are folded up when you get it and to install the wing to the fuselage you have to open your retracts so that you can feed the wires through which is easy. So a servo tester really helped. They recommend plugging in your receiver and doing all that. I just used a servo tester and opened that and made that step very simple. Um, the biggest downfall to this is definitely the lack of canopy space because if you have a big receiver like this one it really eats it all up and then the wires you saw knocked my canopy off I mean I got lucky that I got oh, I that see back you got it kind of tucked in there now yeah. I, see that. I mean it's not ideal but yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure I could feed that differently but it's just nice when you don't have to think about and worry about that when you're flying planes but that's probably the only thing that I didn't like about this and the flying tendencies are absolutely awesome. We'll have a link in the description box and sometimes we have coupon code that will knock like 10, 15 bucks off. It's not a lot, but it's something. Um, and it kind of makes your time watching this video a bit more worth it. So if you guys could check it out and let us know because the way this has been working is newer releases with FMS hasn't been working, but like some older planes it has been. So do us a favor and just check it out and let us know in the comments if it seems to be working or not for you. Now this was a double maiden today, right? I did the airplane and then I maidened my new radio too and I'll talk about that in just a second. But because I'm double maidening, I think it's a really good idea to talk about the AMA, which is the Academy of Model Aeronautics. It's an insurance program for those of us that fly RCs, drive RCs, boats, cars, helicopters, airplanes, drones, everything. If it's remote control, they'll insure you, the pilot, while you're flying. I highly recommend you fly with AMA because even if you're a good pilot or you just feel confident in your inability, you never know when that gust of wind is going to come along and knock your canopy off and then, you know, affect how your airplane flies and you go crash into your buddy's car or something, God forbid. So that's why I always recommend you fly with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. We'll have them linked in the description box below near the airplane and this radio. And let's talk about this radio because it did honestly feel really good. It, the, what you're seeing is, yes, it feels about the way it looks. It doesn't feel lightweight or cheap. It feels nice and high quality. Look at all these switches. This is the A10, the AT10, and it's actually the second version. We'll have this linked in the description box below too. This is a $150 radio with 10 channels. I mean, when you compare it to what's on the market in competition, it's... I don't know how they can do this for 150 when others are like 350, 400, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. It really gets expensive. So it's kind of nice that I was able to pick this up and also focus on budget flying too. Because a lot of times we'll link the airplane in the description box and personal click it, and they'll say, okay, a couple hundred bucks for a plane. That's not bad. And then they'll look at the radios that we have linked and they're like, man, $400 for a radio? I gotta drop $1,000 before I can fly. Well, not if you're flying on something like this. So <clears throat> I'm gonna continue flying with this and continue testing it, but I didn't have any range issues, cutting out brownouts, you know, that stayed connected really well. And the gimbals do feel good. They don't feel the best that I've ever flown on, but they gotta be easily top five or so. I mean, it feels like a really nice radio, especially for the price. Before Abby and I freeze completely solid, I just want to say a massive thanks to God for giving me a strong enough health to get out here and do this video with and for you guys. It's been a very rough couple of weeks. It's been a very rough month actually with Amelia's scares we've had. Abby got sick, probably picked something up from the hospital, and then we thought she was good and passed it on to me so this last week we've only had like two videos and that's why we've all just been sick today is the first day we've had good weather and i've had enough strength to get out here and do a video so i'm very thankful to god i'm also thankful to our patreon supporters because if you guys even when we're not doing videos you're supporting us and that really means the world to us and we want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts for supporting our channel and our family if you like warbirds abby and i will have a hand-picked warbird video popping up right about now thanks for watching we'll see you there bye